I've been exploring some of the changes made from the Spike Legacy app to the Spike 3 app, and I thought that I would share with you some of the significant changes that I noticed to the steering movement blocks. So let's first start by taking a look at how the steering blocks worked in the Spike Legacy or Spike 2 app. I'm just going to make a simple program that turns on the motors to turn right at 100 steering. And now let's make a second program that uses 95 steering instead. So this is what it looks like when you run the program on Spike 2 with 100 steering. As you can see, it does a spin turn, which is what we expect. We would expect 95 steering to be pretty close to 100 steering, so it should be almost a spin turn. But instead, we get what looks like a pivot turn, and then we get this really weird movement, which is not at all what we want. This is one of the reasons why on primelessons.org we teach how to use the tank blocks for turning instead of the steering blocks because they are much more predictable. But now let's take a look at the same code running in the new Spike 3 software and see if anything has changed. So here's the exact same code running on Spike 3 and we see at 100 steering we have the exact same functionality with it doing a spin turn. When we run the code with 95 steering, we now see that it is doing what looks almost like a spin turn, which is what we would expect. Seems like based on this information, in the new Spike 3 software, steering values are now linear, starting with 0 for moving straight, 50 for a pivot turn, all the way up to 100 for doing a spin turn. It's really good to see that LEGO has addressed this issue, and I hope teams will start being able to reliably use the steering blocks for turning. Well, that's all for this video. Look out for more videos on Spike 3 coming soon, including taking a look at some of the missing functionality in Spike 3 and some ways that you can work around it.